I rebuilt this animation from one of Iman Gaji's videos. Today I'm going to show you how Iman's editor really made this animation using After Effects. We'll cover the exact steps, techniques, and effects they use to get that signature look. This tutorial is split into five key segments. First, I'll show you the trick to creating that unique gradient and grid. Second, we'll create the main case and the animated text. Third, we'll dive into the 3D watch and creating realistic shadows. And finally, you'll learn the secret that big editors use to get these smooth camera movements. Let's get started. First of all, we'll create our gradient background starting with a new solid. I'm picking a deep, rich blue here to set the mood for the entire scene. Grab the ellipse tool and draw a small circle in the top left corner to act as our light source. For the color, let's go with a blue that's just a shade lighter than our background so it stands out. Switch to the pen tool and draw some abstract shapes like beams of light coming from the circle. They don't need to be perfect. The goal is an organic flowing look. One long thin one and then a slightly wider one next to it is perfect. Select all these shapes and pre-compose them. On this new background, pre-comp, add a blur to soften everything up. I'm using BCC Blur, but a standard Gaussian Blur works just as well. Crank up the blur amount significantly to soften those hard edges. That's the look we're after. I'm just quickly jumping back inside the background composition to tweak the shapes. A little adjustment here and there really helps sell the light ray effect. Back in our main comp for that clean high-tech look, apply the grid effect to our background. Our background is done. Now let's create the main info card by making a brand new composition inside this new comp drag in the background composition we just made. Select the rectangle tool and draw out a wide rectangle. To get those sleek rounded corners open, the shape layer properties go to rectangle path one and just crank up the roundness. To give this card some dimension, right click the layer, go to layer styles and select bevel and emboss. Instantly, you get that nice glassy 3D edge. It's a simple trick that adds a ton of production value. A solid color is a bit flat, so let's upgrade it to a gradient. Search for the four color gradient effect and apply it. The key here is choosing colors from the same family to keep it looking clean. I'm going with a blend of dark blues to match our background aesthetic. You can move these points around to change how the colors blend. I'm positioning them in the corners to create a nice diagonal flow. Beautiful. All right, the card's ready now. It's time for text. Let's add a text layer for the title, total spent, and another for the value, which we'll use million for now. For the total spent title, let's choose a sophisticated font. Minion Pro is a great choice here. We'll adjust the size and spacing to make it look clean and readable. To make the text pop, let's give it a subtle gradient. Apply the gradient ramp effect. We'll set the start color and the end color to a darker blue, then just adjust the ramp points so the gradient flows nicely across the text. Now for the main value, $5 million. I'm using a bolder, more prominent font for this. To create that cool number scrolling animation, we'll pre-compose this number sequence and call it Numbers. Inside the Numbers comp, in this new layer, we'll create our number sequence. Just type 1 all the way up to 5. Grab the rectangle tool and draw a mask around the number 1. We'll animate the position property of the text layer. Set a keyframe at the start, move forward about a second, and then drag the text layer up so the number 5 is inside the mask. To make this animation feel snappy, select both keyframes and open the graph editor. I'll apply a smooth animation curve which makes the animation start fast and slow down nicely at the end. 
Now when we play it back, we have a slick rolling number counter. Perfect. Back in our main case one comp, you can see the counter is working as intended. Let's add some finishing touches to our text. First, we'll apply the satin layer style to all our text layers. This adds a subtle inner shadow that creates a silky glossy look. We'll adjust the distance and size to keep it from being too overpowering. Next for that signature glow, we'll use the Deep Glow plugin. Apply it to all the text layers. This gives us a much more realistic and beautiful glow than the default one. We'll tweak the radius and exposure to get a soft ethereal light that makes the text feel like it's emitting its own light source. Just copy and paste the effect onto the other text layers. And now for the centerpiece. I'm dragging in a 3D model of a watch in GLB format. We'll position it right. Then we'll pre-compose it so it's easier to work with. To give it that realistic shadowing, use Rectangle Tool and reduce opacity. Add blur to the two rectangles. We'll create keyframes for its position and orientation so we can animate it flying into the scene. We'll have it start from off screen Now inside this new comp, we'll refine the animation. Select all the keyframes for the watch's movement and rotation and let's adjust its animation curve. We'll give the motion a beautiful fluid feel that looks high-end. To bring this all to life, let's add some text animations. I'm using the Atom X extension here to save time, and I'll drop a link to it in the description and apply a simple opacity fade in. We'll do the same for the dollar sign and the million text, just offsetting them in the timeline so they appear one after another. And for our number counter, we'll add the animation right as the watch settles into place. This timing makes the whole graphic feel connected and intentional. Add a quick opacity fade in for the numbers.
You'll find the plugin link in the description. The final step is to add a camera to create a dynamic camera move. In your main composition, right-click, add a new camera. Then to make it easy to control, we'll create a null object. Make the null object 3D and then parent the camera to it. Now instead of animating the camera itself, we can just animate the null object's position and scale. We'll set a keyframe at the start move to the end of our animation and then scale in and move the position slightly. We'll select those keyframes and create a gentle curve in the graph editor to ensure the camera move is buttery smooth. And by the way, to get that camera view switch, cut the null layer and camera layer to many layers, then play with keyframes and graph based on how you want your animations. Just like I'm doing here. And now I'm creating new camera movement, just like we did before. Now I'm refining things up. Now our scene is almost ready, just few more refinements. Add the third camera movement. Don't worry here, I'm just adjusting timing. In the next video, I'm going to break down how this animation was made.